How to charge a Model 3, next on Now You Know. So the Model 3 is gonna be most people's like first full electric car. That's true. Um, I know that a lot of people may be driving hybrids, maybe some plug-in hybrids, and so those people are probably gonna be at an advantage. And, and some people might be switching from leaves. Wait, like why, are they, why are they an advantage? Because uh, they're, they're more used to the charging, how charging works. Right. Um, and so today, we are going to look at a bunch of different ways that you can charge your Model 3. Yeah, because it's a it can be scary and overwhelming when you're first faced with it because it's like if you had to use gas stations for the first time. It's right. like, not that they're hard to do, but if you've never done it, you have to go find them and know what the etiquette is and how to use them. So we're going to help you with that today. All right, so here we go. Let's go. All right, so uh, the first way to charge a Tesla, and probably the, the fastest and easiest way, is at a supercharger station. And Tesla has built these stations all throughout the country. All of these pale red dots and, and the ones that we can reach over here are all superchargers. Wait, so can I just face that? So if they're pale, Jesse, that means we can't reach them with the battery we have now, but if, right. they're, if they're bright red, then we can reach them. That's, yes. I just, that's a really cool feature, yeah. actually, that it gets overlooked. It gives you kind of the, the range of the car right here. Wait, so you're saying that we could reach all of these, looks like a dozen and a half superchargers? Yeah, we could practically make it to Canada. We could make it all the way to South Burlington, Vermont. Now, when you just clicked on that, mm -hmm. it's telling us a few things. It's telling us that there's eight stalls available at South Burlington. It's yep. telling us how much electricity will come out of those superchargers. Mm -hmm. And it's telling us all the amenities available there. Yep. And so if I hit navigate, it'll just go there. Yep. So, for instance, I do want to travel to the new supercharger in Lemonster. So I tap on it, hit navigate, and the navigation system is going to plot my route there. Yep. It's going to tell me some cool things too. It's going to tell me how much energy I'm going to have in the battery when I get there. Yep. And it's going to tell me how long it's going to take to get there. So that's really great. Yep. The distance, the number of minutes, and what time you should be getting there. So we're on our way to a supercharger to charge, but a much more common thing that you're going to find, a much more common charger, is a level two charger. And it'd be good to show you how that works. So uh, how do we navigate to that, Jesse? So you can't do it through the screen, unfortunately. Um, for the most part, you won't really need to go to one of these. I mean, you have a Model X, Dad. How many times have you charged at a level two charger? Maybe five times. Okay, so it's not very common. No. And why is that? Um, because it's slow. I yep. mean, so it, you know, it's going to take probably you're probably going to get around 15 miles to the hour. So that means that if you're sitting someplace having dinner, you're probably only going to get 20, 30 miles of range, which almost isn't worth it to me. Um, so that's the main reason. Mm -hmm. Second reason is it, some of them cost money. Yeah. So it's like, why bother? And thirdly, I guess I'd say, because with a supercharger, you don't really need it. So it's usually just in an oddball case where you can't find a supercharger. So Jesse said we're going to need an app to find this charge point. Yep. Um, we can't use the Tesla screen. So what, what, what app do you use? So the app that I generally use is PlugShare. Um, and PlugShare is nice because it shows you every level two charger, not just charge points. And, and lots of other chargers too. So if we zoom in here, we see that there are two uh, charging stations. So there's one at Chili's and there's an, there's actually a couple more in a tech park that's nearby the Chili's. All right, there is the charge point station. So do I pull straight in, Jesse? Uh, no, you're gonna wanna back in. Oh, I wanna back in. That's right, because our charger port's at the back. All right, so we're at a charge port station. I guess I can take you the one, right? So um, this one's broken, I guess. No, Dad, you have to. <laughs> this isn't a supercharger. You have to pay for these. Oh. Or at least have a, an account. Wait, I have to have an account? Yeah. So it's okay. We can use my account because I am a Leaf driver and I have a charge point. So I can either use my app to start the charge, or I could just come up with my phone, even in the home screen beep and then it'll authorize and start charging oh cool and so, so now you can pull one of them out and is this the one yeah well you can do pretty much either one the, the cords are they're attached to these things so you're able to actually pull it and get quite a far way away from from the charger all right so on the model 3 i uh, can just tap here and this will open yeah and then i take this and i put it well no see again this is this, <laughs> this isn't a tesla this is a. Uh, this is broken. That's not made for Teslas. That's made for all electric cars. This is an electric car. Right. Okay. Well, we need the adapter. Oh, this thing. Yes. So you'll notice that on this side, it's uh, the right plug for that, and on this side, it's the right plug for that. So you plug that end on there. Okay. 
and then you plug that into there. Okay. And then you start charging. Oh. And so then here it tells you how long you've been charging for, and oh, so, 0 0.006. Yeah, so okay, it's let's go just, in the car and see what we're getting. Yeah, because it's cold. So we're getting 30 amps okay. at 202 volts, um, which is equal to six kilowatts. Now at a typical supercharger, you're getting about 130 or so, 150 kilowatts. Wow. So this is a lot less. It doesn't give us a miles per hour because it would be uh, pretty sad. Um, so 30 minutes remaining if we want to get up to the limit that we've set on the right. battery. So let's say right now we're at 89. If we set the limit to 100%, it would take us an hour and 40 minutes. Now that's not completely fair because we're at um, the taper charge. We're at the taper charge, so it, it'll stop giving us six kilowatts, you know, somewhere so around there. I'm kind of confused here, and I think this confuses a lot of people when they start learning about electric cars. Mm -hmm. There's a set limit here yeah. where you can set how much charge you want. Why wouldn't you just always set that at 100? Like, I just always want my cell phone to be on 100, and I always want my car to be on 100. Well, so I? here's the thing. Lithium-ion batteries do not like to be charged to 100. Why We're kind of used to, like, uh, NICADs and stuff, which like to be charged to 100% and fully discharged. Lithium-ion batteries hate that. Oh, okay, so what happens if you do that to an, a lithium-ion battery? So you're gonna start to lose range, and that's bad. Oh. One thing that the battery really doesn't like is to stay charged at 100%. Oh. In fact, your battery, when it says it's 100% charged in a Tesla or other electric car, is actually not at 100%. It's usually around, you know, 95, 98% charged. Oh, okay. So setting the limit is actually pretty important because it allows you to make sure that you don't overcharge your battery and sort of waste the life of the battery. So as we're doing right now, we're, we're lowering the uh, charge back down to like what it says here as trip. Mm -hmm. So there's daily and there's trip. So what, I don't understand. So daily would be if I'm just going to work and stuff and I don't need the battery to be 100%, I choose right. some amount. What's a good amount for me to pick? Uh, around 80% is rather safe. Yeah. So if I don't need a whole lot of charge, keeping it at 70 or 80% all the time is a good idea. And then trip, what does that mean? Uh, trip would be if you were going on a long trip and you needed that range. And, and the best way to do it is to charge up to whatever your trip charge percentage is. So say 95, 100% and then immediately head out. Oh, and you can do that here because of this button here, scheduled charging. So yes. that I would set, let's say I was going to grandma's house at 7 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. I would set that to start charging at, let's say, 5 a.m. Yep. And that way it would charge my battery up so that right at 7 a.m. I'd be full, I'd get in the car and go. Right. Now, about this level two, does this mean that a level two is always the same? Like if I go to a level two across town, it's gonna be exactly the same as this level two? Most of the time, they are going to be pretty much exactly the same. It usually gives about 6.6 .6 kilowatts. Now, there are some that are level ones. They're just sort of underpowered. In your area, I think you're gonna build up a, a pretty good idea of what is a good charger and what isn't. And if you're driving a Model 3, I'll be honest, you're probably not gonna have to worry about that in the slightest because your battery is gonna be so large that most of the time, you're just going back and forth to work, back and forth to wherever you're going. Um, and if you need to go any further than that, you're gonna be hitting a supercharger. There's going to be one you know, along your route. But I do wanna to talk to the people out there who might have some cool circumstances where you can get free electricity. That's true. like right now we're charging for free. Right. And if in your area you could charge here during the day, like maybe you work across the street or something, you might take advantage of that and so, be on the lookout for places like that because while you can get it, might as well get some free electricity. Right, and you could talk to your work or something like that, especially if you live in an apartment and you can't charge at your apartment. Um, also talk to your apartment, see if they wanna get one, I mean, yeah, talk to your work. In Massachusetts, for example, if your company has 15 or more employees, they can get, I think, half of the cost of the charger off by a state grant. And so mm -hmm. they can install a charger and get a lot of that cost paid for by the state. Right. And it will help them attract new employees and customers. So um, there's lots of cool options for companies that want to put chargers in. So Jesse, I've had this question. What if I was a hooligan yeah. and I was walking through the neighborhood and I don't like electric cars and I'm like, ha, 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 I'm gonna unplug his electric car. Right. And he will think it's being charged, but when he gets out in the morning, his car will be dead. Can I do that? Uh, yeah, you can. Basically, the problem is with these kinds of, of chargers, um, you see how they have this hook? Yeah. They can lock the hook, right? but they they only lock it when it's in there. So right now I can just push this button and and unlock, unlock. and it unhint and it unlatches from this on the Tesla adapter. But wait, I have another question, Jesse. Yeah. Could someone come along and steal my adapter? So no, they couldn't do that because unless the once the car is locked, uh -huh. you can't pull it out. All right, so with the car plugged in, 
and with it locked, as soon as you disconnect the charger, you pull that out, ha ha ha, as the hooligan. Can I now steal this? No, that will Won't remain locked in the car. Now this is true of also um, Tesla superchargers and destination chargers. So oh. you can't unplug a destination or a supercharger. Interesting. Um, now on other electric cars, um, this is what you get on the actual car, just the J1772 part. And they have something that will, a, a little thing that will lock it in place to prevent hooligans. However, when you're plugged in somewhere like this, uh, a hooligan could unplug you. So now we've unlocked the car. That turns white. White, and then you can pop it out. Okay. And then do I have to do something with the charge port door? Oh, nope. it just closed. <laughs> That's cool. All right, so we're at a supercharger. This one's in Lemonster, Mass. And uh, unlike when we were at a level two charger, this is a little simpler, right? I yep. don't have to do any kind of credit cards. Nothing. How do I take this out? Pull it. Oh, that's easy. And then uh, what do I do here? How do I open this? Uh, you press the, the hidden button. So okay. then you open up your charge port door and then you pop it in. Okay. Now I want to point out, this is a big, thick, stiff cable. So unlike the level two charger, which had more of like a regular extension cord kind of feel, this is like, it's like a hose. Yeah. So you have to get really close, right? Because this is all the room you have. Yeah, it's not stretchy. And so you pretty much have to be in just the right location. Yep. You can't pull in forward. As you can see, all these cars are backed up. Yeah, unless you have a, a situation like this car down over here, the supercharger is actually a pull-in. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see, so leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.